You want to be like that so-called white man. You want to be like these other nations. That's your antichrist right here. Yo, how much you your shot, In 2018, ignorance is a choice. It's time to take back what's ours. Fools that are despising the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High God. First scripture I want to go to. Give me Ezekiel chapter 3. And you can read verse 4. See, we come out here every week to give our people knowledge of truth because we've been lied to for a very long time. We've been disrespected and used and abused for a very long time. But see, you're going to see that things are about to start changing on a wide scale. But if you don't know who you are according to the Bible, you're not going to know where you fall in to the things that's going on. So go ahead. Ezekiel chapter 3 verse 4 And he said unto me Son of man go Get thee unto the house of Israel So this is a decree given from the God of the Bible He said son of man Go get to the people of Israel The Israelites So called blacks, latinos and native americans Go ahead And speak with my words And he said speak with his words I want to emphasize that Because so many times our people fall victim to the opinions and to the vain philosophies of men. Read that part again. And speak with my words. God said when we speak to our people, we have to speak using his words. What we're reading is not our opinion. We're not reading the book of Yashima. We're reading the Bible, the book that God endorses. Go ahead. And speak with my words unto them. Go ahead. For thou art not sent unto a people of strange speech. You see, God said, we're not sent to a people of a strange speech. And what that means is we're sent to our people, meaning you know what we're talking about. That's right. I'm not speaking to people who speak Chinese, who speak Mandarin, Cantonese, Vietnamese. I'm speaking to my people. Y'all can hear me. Y'all can understand me. Go ahead. And of an hard language, uh -huh. but to the house of Israel, not many people of a strange speech. Not many people of a strange speech and of a heart. Hold that. So God made it, he made it clear. He said, look, I'm not telling you to go to these other nations. That's one thing our people have been lied to about for the longest time, that this book, the book that we call the Bible, is inclusive for everybody. All nationalities, all races. That's not the case. God said, get to the children of Israel. Go ahead. Not too many people of a strange speech and of a hard language whose words thou could not understand. Because y'all can understand me out here. We speak in English, and for those who speak Spanish, it's still your people, you know what we're saying, go ahead. Surely, had I sent thee to them, God said, surely, if I had sent you to those other nations, go ahead, they would have hearkened unto thee. It said, they would have hearkened unto us, and all the other prophets that got sent to our people. Because the problem is, when you read the Bible, and you understand who we are as a people today, we don't like to listen to God's word, and that's a fact. Bring it up. All throughout the history of the Bible, all throughout the history of us being here in the United States, we don't like to listen to the words of God. The prime example is that many of us are going to go to church tomorrow on Sunday. When God never said, learn my word. He never said, give obeisance to me on Sunday, the first day of the week. God said, our people, we're supposed to be learning about him. We're supposed to be teaching his word. Giving credence unto him on the Sabbath day, which is the seventh day of the week. Today, Saturday. Getting into God's laws. Because our people don't like to keep God's laws. We've been told that the law of the Old Testament, oh, that's done away with. You don't have to worry about it. But that law of tithing, you got to make sure you still keep that. See, that's the problem that I have personally. My people are still being pimped in these church houses. Bring it up. They lie to our people saying that we don't have to keep God's laws, but then they're going to enforce God's laws on you to ask for your money. When you read in the Bible, God never asked people for money. So this is why we come out here to give our people the truth. But go ahead. But the house of Israel will not hearken unto thee. You see, our people, we don't listen. And it's a fact and it's sad, but my brothers out here, my sisters out here are the same nationality. If I was to give you some information, 
Y'all would scrutinize that a whole lot more compared to if I was a white man giving you information. You would take it as fact right off the, right off the bat. If I was of another nationality telling you things I was according to this Bible, you would believe me with no questions. It's the same reason why our people never questioned about Jesus Christ being a so-called white man. No one ever had a question about that. But when we show you according to the Bible that he was a melanated man who looked like me and you, that's when people want to start asking questions. Well, how do we really know that's what it says? Well, you do know the Bible was translated and written by only when it's coming from us. Information given to you by your own people do our people have a problem with. It. Yeah. This is what we have to fix within our nation. Yeah. We have to stop depending on our oppressors for everything. No, no. We understand we already go to them for the food and clothing, yeah. for job opportunities, yeah. but what about the truth? Yeah. How can you believe anything that a person who brought you and your ancestors here like cattle, like dogs chained up to a boat. How could you believe anything that person tells you is true? Malcolm X said you would have to be a fool to be taught by your oppressors. But yet, here in 2018, that's the only type of education we look for. That's the type of only information that we accept. This is why we come out here because something needs to change, Israel. Go ahead. But the house of Israel will not hearken unto thee, uh -huh. for they will not hearken unto me. And that's the reason why. Our people don't even listen to the Most High God. So that's why our people don't like to listen to us. But as I stated, what you see going on here in these last days, are people being shot down by police. The Bible talks about that. Let me show you. Go to the book of Lamentations. And I believe it's chapter 4. Is that 4 where it says, uh, vain, uh, vain help? 4 and 17. Yeah, 4 and 17. Go ahead. Lamentations chapter 4, verse 17. As for us, our eyes are yet failed for our vain help. Hey, y'all, I want y'all to listen up. I know it gets loud out here, but listen to what I'm saying. Listen to what the God is saying. Go ahead. In our watching, we have watched for a nation that could not save us. Look at all these years that our people go by voting. Read that part again. In our watching, we have watched for a nation that could not save us. America cannot save you, so-called black man. Right. So-called Latino man, so-called Native American man. America is not here to save you. That's why your vote does nothing. That's why our people are still getting shot down every day of the week unjustly by cops. Read that again. In our watching, we have watched for a nation that could not save us. Every four years, our people are watching and waiting to see who the next devil is that's going to be in office who can offer some type of salvation for our people. Y'all thought Obama was going to do it for you. How did that work out? Bring it out, right? Obama did little to nothing super beneficial to our people. In fact, he did more so um, stuff for the gay community than for our people. That's right. He wanted to make sure that the homosexuals had their rights. But you know what he didn't change? The fact that all these so-called police officers is getting off with murder of our people. How come the president don't have nothing to say about that? See, our people, we have to come out of the ways of America. The Bible tells us in Micah, chapter 2 and verse 10, that this land was going to destroy us because it's polluted. Everything about this land is polluted. The mind state of everybody in America is polluted. The water is polluted. The air is polluted. The soil is polluted. Our bodies are polluted. The food is polluted. Everything here is polluted. Why would our people, as a product of this place, be anything different? As a matter of fact, hold that and go to Micah chapter 2 and verse 10 because I want my people to hear this. This isn't your Sunday sermon that y'all gonna hear. I'm not out here telling you that everything is gonna be okay if you give in your tithes. I'm not here to tell you that by walking up to the front of the church and saying that Jesus Christ is your personal Lord and Savior that you saved. I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying that our people are going through hell and that if we don't repent, it's gonna be worse for our people. Go ahead and read that. The book of Micah, chapter 2, verse 10. Arise ye and depart. You see that? As much as our people love America, because our people do, we, we love this place. We think we have rights. 
You can roll around in your Benz and your BMW. You can smoke all the little weeds you want. You can drink all the little lean you want. Our people love this place. But God said you have to do what? Arise ye and depart. God said we have to depart. We have to detach from America. This place is destroying our people. Go ahead. For this is not your rest. See, America is not our rest. You know how many of our people just say, I just want to find a good job. I'm going to go to school, find me a good job just so I can be comfortable. God doesn't want you to be comfortable here in America. It's a reason why you have to fear for your life when you walk outside your front door. Whether it be uh, threats that you get from your own people or fear of getting shot by police. It's a reason why we struggle with that. It's because God said this isn't our rest. It doesn't matter how much money you get in this place. All the physical wealth and all the other things that you acquire that doesn't make this place your rest. Go ahead. This is not your rest because it is polluted. Because this place is polluted. Go ahead. It shall destroy you. It shall destroy you. And now look at our people today. We're destroyed as a nation of people. One of the biggest ways we're destroyed is that we don't even look at one another as a nation. Our people, it's crazy because the looks on my brother's faces when I pass them up in these streets and I tell them, what's up, bro? They be surprised that I said anything to them because our people are used to mean mugging one another, walking up and down the street. That's, that's a shame. That's sad. You think the Asian community struggle with that? Understanding that they're a nation of people? They don't. That's why they all prosper. If an Asian man, he owns a business, he knows how to employ his friends so that they can win too. But what do our people do? We get in those places of employment, we want to pull each other down. Do anything to sabotage the campaign of your brother for getting in a better position. We're destroyed as a nation of people. This is why we have to come out here and teach our people the truth according to the Bible because we're not learning it in the Sunday churches. My so-called Latino brothers, you look at me as if I'm not your brother, but we are. We went through the same stuff and still going through the same stuff. Just because your hair is probably a little bit more fine, you speak a different language than me, that don't mean nothing, bro. Because at the end of the day, you still get banged on by essays, I'm still getting banged on by cribs. You still have to worry about getting shot down by police, I gotta worry about getting shot down by police. And at the end of the day, we both went into captivity by the hands of our oppression, this so-called white man. Why are we any different? We should be teaming up. But this is why we come out here. Was that all of that? One more line. Go ahead. It shall destroy you, even with a sword destruction. Even with a sword destruction. Go to Isaiah chapter 3. And read verse 8. Let me show y'all what's going on. I know it's not the popular message, but if just one of y'all takes the words that I'm saying and go home, do some research, that's all that matters. We're not asking for everybody to come out here and join this, to wake up to your true nationality. Because this isn't no religious movement like the Christian organization, like the Catholic organization. All we're doing out here is coming to you and telling you who you really are as a nation of people and the culture that we want celebrated and upheld. The laws that you read in the Bible, that's our culture. That is our culture, and that's all we're trying to get our people to understand. Go ahead. The book of Isaiah, chapter 3 and verse 8. For Jerusalem is ruined. It says my people is ruined. As beautiful as my people are. Because our people are beautiful. We're the funniest people on this earth, the most creative. Everything about our people is beautiful when you really take a look at us. That's right. But it says that we're ruined because all these beautiful qualities that we have, we don't know how to use them for the better good. Go ahead. And Judah is fallen. It says Jerusalem and Judah, and they're both ruined and fallen. Go ahead. Because their tongue and their doings are against Yahweh. Check this out, sisters. It says our people, our tongues and our doings are against our God. What does that mean? That means the way we live it right now, contrary to popular belief, is not right. You saying that you're, you had a great time with your family celebrating Easter, that's against God because God didn't give us Easter. We come out here every year and tell our people the same thing. 
We're being lied to in these churches. We're being lied to by our oppressors. But read. Against Yahweh to provoke the eyes of his glory. And we provoke our God. We say things that are so blasphemous and we don't even care. Not even knowing that the God of the Bible, the God of the creator of everything, he chose us to be a special people unto himself and we blaspheme him. The nerve of our people, the audacity of our people to walk up and down these streets as if our ish don't stink. We're polluted. Go ahead. The shoe of their countenance doth witness against them. It says the show of our countenance even bears witness against the sins that we commit against our God. You tell me how we have a nation of kings and queens, princes and princesses, how we walking around doped up. How we walking around tatted up and filthy in our bodies up. When we supposed to be kings and queens. How? How do we go from royalty to what we doing now? It doesn't make sense. Something is not adding up. Read. And they declare their sins as Sodom. It says, and we declare our sin as Sodom. Look at all the homosexual activity within our community. It's nonsense. You got people that want to talk about the New World Order and the Illuminati and population control. But these are the same people who are for homosexual rights. Bring it up. Homosexual, uh, homosexuality is population control. Bring it up. How is your nation going to flourish and populate when they're doing things that's unnatural and goes against procreation? Bring it up. How can two men come together and make a baby naturally? Because this white man, oh, he's the devil. He'll find ways where you can pay money and go to a laboratory and you can get pregnant as a man. But naturally, it's against nature, and it doesn't make sense. Exactly, Romans chapter 1 talks about it. It just doesn't make sense. Our people want to talk about how we need to take a stand against police brutality and this wicked government, yet we still fall victim to their devices. And not only do we have our men being homosexual, the women do it too, but for those who aren't homosexuals, our women are running to the abortion clinics, furthering the agenda of population control amongst our people. And see, we don't really see the bigger picture at all because we don't know who we are as a nation of people. Hold that and go to Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 6. If you truly understood who you were as a nation of people, we would not be doing the things that we do today, y'all. I'm telling you. There's no way that our men and our sisters will be guzzling lean by the gallons. Smoking up weed by the ounces and pounds. We wouldn't be doing it if we knew who we were as a nation of people. But let God tell you. Go ahead. Deuteronomy 7 and verse 6. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. He said we're a holy people. Do y'all know what the word holy means? Know the truth. It means we were made specifically to be set apart for the specific service of our God. Absolutely. But yet we find ourselves dancing with the devil. Go ahead and read. Yahweh, thy God, has chosen thee. Hold on, he said we're chosen. A lot of times our people feel left out, but God said you don't have to, you're chosen. Bring it up. Read. Chosen thee to be a special people. Unto he said, and you're special. It's a reason why you turn on that TV and you see LeBron James jumping out the, the court. Right. It's a reason why you see our people on that track and field doing stuff that the other nations can't believe. It's a reason why nobody else can endure all of the, uh, the, uh, the pain and the, the atrocities that happen to our people. No one else can withstand these type of things. Over 500 years of our people going through this and we still here. Still beautiful as ever. We just don't know who we are, but read. To be a special people unto himself. We're special unto the God himself. Go ahead. Above all. Hold on, wait, wait, wait. It says equal. Above. The same. Above all people. God said we are above all people. That's right. So why are we fighting for equal rights? Why do we want to be equal to a people God never chose? This is what I'm saying, we don't know who we are. This is why we have to come out here. 
This is why you see God's prophets waking up in these last days. But go ahead. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Above everybody else on the face of this earth. God chose you so-called black man, so-called Latino man, so-called Native American man. He chose you. Go to Leviticus 25 and 55. Because our people, we want to serve God. We do. But the problem is we don't have the proper knowledge on how. We've been lied to once again saying that any and everybody can serve the God of the Bible, but that's not the case. I'm going to show you who God chose to be his servants. Read. The book of Leviticus, chapter 25, verse 55. For unto me the children of Israel are servants. God said unto him the children of Israel are his servants. That never changed. That's never changed. That's why the, the uh, Christian movement is one of the biggest organizations and religious movements on the earth. Mostly filled with our people. The other nations, they want to try to skip and get their way in there, but it doesn't work like that. When you read this Bible precept upon precept, it makes a whole lot more sense than the doctrine that you're being taught in your religious organization. Once again, all I'm doing is telling you who you are as a nation of people and the culture that we had. Sister, look at this. This is who we are. We're not black. That's the biggest lie they want you to believe. Go to uh, Joshua, chapter 1 and verse 8. And that's a beautiful thing, teaching your kids who they are. This is a beautiful thing. Brother, teaching and see who they are. We got to stop teaching our kids that they're black. That they're Latino, that they're Native Indian, that, that's not a nationality. Those were names that were put upon our people when we were in slavery. But read this. The book of Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. This book of the law, this book of the law, I want you to get it out of your head that this is a book of religious doctrines. This is a book of laws, statutes, and commandments that belong to one nation of people, us. Go ahead shall not depart out of thy mouth. You see, these laws were never, ever, ever, ever to depart from out of our mouth. That's right. So why is it today that when I talk to my brothers and sisters, yeah. this law is the furthest thing from their mind? Bring it up. Read. But thou shalt meditate. We shall meditate upon this law. When we read this law, we see why it's unprofitable and wicked and evil to have our sisters out here selling themselves for money. When we read this law, we can see how improper and how stupid gangbanging is. When we read this law, we see how foolish it is for us to be pumping poison into our bodies. When you read this law and meditate upon it, you learn how to love your people. Read. Meditate therein day and night. Day and night. That thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. See, not just some of it. This Bible isn't a bag of trail mix. You can't eat everything you like and pick out the things you don't. It says everything that was written within this book we shall keep and meditate upon it. Go ahead. According to all that was written therein. Everything that's written. For then thou shalt It says for then. When we do this, it says then. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. Because isn't that what our people want? We just want to prosper. All we want is an easy life. Most of us don't want to be rich. We just want enough money so we can be comfortable. Always looking for the come up. Always having to hustle. That's because you're not chasing true prosperity. Prosperity isn't singular. That's something that's spread amongst our nation. When everybody's good, then your people are prospering. That's right. It doesn't stop with you. Yeah, you might have the bins. Yeah, you might have the Mercedes, the big house on the hill. But what about your people? That's what we have to learn about. Look at Moses. He went from the Pharaoh's seat. He forsook all of that to come down here with his people. He saw his people being mistreated, used and abused by the Egyptians. And he said, I can't be a part of that. He forsook the nation that he grew up under. And that's what we have to do. We grew up under the ways of America. But just like Moses, we have to wake up to who we truly are. Look at how our brothers and sisters are living and go to them and help them out. Read. And then thou shalt have good success. It says, and then 
our people can finally say that they're successful. This is the real success that the Bible teaches about our people. Because they always talk about the kingdom of heaven, but they don't talk about the success and the real prosperity about it. Because the kingdom of heaven cannot be for everybody. There's no way a nation of people here that's rich. Uh, they, this is their heaven. They can't be rich. They can't have everything uh, to their advantage here, do us wrong, and then no way in hell think they're going to have that same opportunity in the next life. That doesn't even make sense. That's not even logical. And when you read the scriptures about the kingdom of heaven, it's impossible for that kingdom to be for everybody. Is that all of that? Yeah, it was all of Go to uh, Isaiah chapter 14. Because that, that's the real prosperity, the kingdom of heaven. But see, our people, we haven't been taught how to truly seek and go towards that righteous road to the kingdom of heaven. Because Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, he made it so clear. He said, look, wide is the gate and broad is the way to destruction. But it says to get to that kingdom of heaven, that's a straight and narrow path. Meaning, not everybody's going to be on that same tip. That's right. It's a reason why our movement is being demonized by your government. It's a reason why all the wicked hate this movement. Because this is the straight and narrow path to the kingdom. Come and learn about it. Start at verse 1. For the, Isaiah chapter 14, verse 1. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob. Our people, God is going to have mercy upon us. And I'm not talking about the mercy that the Christian church is talking about. I'm talking about when death and destruction plagues this world. Because y'all do know America and the rest of the world is going to be destroyed, right? That's right. There's no place that this, there's, there's no way that this wicked place can inherit the kingdom. Because the kingdom of heaven is going to be established on earth. The Bible talks about how this place is going to be utterly destroyed with fire, with violence. It says that's the mercy that we're going to receive because his chosen is going to be saved from all of that. Read. Yahweh will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel. And it says at the end of the day, no matter what anybody else says, he's still going to choose Israel. Go ahead. And set them in their own land. It says, and hey, we going to get our land back. How many of our people want their own land? I'm not talking about 40 acres and a mule. I'm talking about a kingdom. We're going to have our own land because all of our land was stripped from us. It was taken from us. When we had our own land, our people was put to death on it. We were taken out by chains and then our land was stolen. And then you know what? As the generations went by, we were taught that we don't even have a land. 50 years from now, our people aren't going to be taught that we came here from Africa. We were going to say we were always here in America under the so-called white man. Read. And the strangers shall be joined with them. Now this is talking about the kingdom of heaven. It says when we get our own land, the strangers is going to be joined with us. Talking about all these other nations. Go ahead. And they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. And they're going to cleave to us because we're going to be winning. Go ahead. And the people shall take them. It says we're going to take them. Just like they took us. Go ahead. And bring them to their place. It says we're going to bring them to our place. The land of the Lord. Yeah. And the house of Israel shall possess them. Hold on. It says we shall possess these people. That's right. Because we don't really possess anything here in America. Yeah. You think you own, you possess your house? Watch the government come and repossess it. Uh -huh. You think you own your car? Watch them come and repossess it. We don't own anything here in this land. But it says when we get back to our own land, oh, we're going to possess a whole lot. Go ahead. Israel shall possess them in the land of Yahweh for servants. It says we're going to have servants. We're not going to be doing them wrong like how they did us. But damn sure they're going to serve us. We just serve us. The kingdom of heaven isn't for everybody. It's for you so-called black man, so-called Latino man, so-called Native American man. That's right. That's what we have to understand. In every society, in any kingdom, you have two sets of people. You have the ruling class and you have the working class. Who's going to be the ruling and working class in the kingdom of the Most High God? That's the question that needs to be asked. And the answer is right here in the Bible. Go ahead. And they shall rule over their oppressors. And it says we're going to rule over our oppressors. All praise to the Most High God.
because we are oppressed here in America. I'm only 22 years old and I know I'm oppressed. The scriptures talk about uh, how having all this knowledge is wearisome to your mind because you know what's going on. I be at my job complaining to my coworkers because they show up every day just happy and smiling, can't wait to clock in. I'm like, damn, you a slave and you love it. I hate it here. I can't wait till my people are back on top. I can't wait till everything that was taken from us is restored. This is what we have to get back to. Give me Isaiah chapter 46 and verse 9. This is what we have to get back to. Sister, please take one of these literatures. I want you to learn who you are. Then come and learn, sis. We out here for you. And I don't want my people to get it mistaken. We are out here for you. Bring it out. We're not out here for the Asian, the Chinese, the, the white man, the Arab man. We're out here for you. That's right. That's right. The other nations are cool. It's my people I'm worried about. I want to make sure we okay. That's right. Well, go ahead and read that, huh? The book of Isaiah, chapter 46 and verse 9. Remember the former things. I'm sorry, 49 and 6. I'm sorry. No, 49 and 6. Go ahead. The book of Isaiah, chapter 49 and verse 6. And he said, It is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob. God said it's a light thing that we should be his servants. The world demonizes servitude to the Most High God. You know how many of your friends, they say they're Christian, they believe in God, but won't even pray over their meal in public because they feel like their friends are going to clown them for something? Oh, you being a nerd, you a geek, you really do that? The world has brainwashed to manipulate our people's thoughts and to think that serving the Most High God is something that's just treacherous, something that's not common. God said it's a light thing. It shouldn't be as hard as we make it. Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry, read that last part again. And he said, it is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob. It says to raise up the tribes of Jacob. We're raising up our people. It should be a light thing for our men to be out here raising up their nation. But nobody wants to step up to the plate. Because it's a whole lot easier being a nigga. And excuse my French, but you understand what I'm saying. Bring it out, huh? It's a whole lot easier to sell your people drugs than to get them to stop doing the drugs. No. It's a whole lot easier to get in that microphone booth and spit all these lies and all these poisons to your people than to get them to stop listening to it. God said we're supposed to be out here as men raising up our nation. But you know what? A lot of our men are scared. And that's facts. Read on. And to restore the preserved of And to restore. Brother, right here, do you know how much stuff was taken from us? If you truly understood how much was taken from our people, you would be hot. You would want everything restored to you. But reading the truth of this Bible and teaching it, all oh, that's going to come back a hundredfold. They stole everything from our people and lied and said that it's theirs. They stole everything. They even stole our culture. But you know what? I always, I've been saying this a lot lately. Our people get mad at culture vultures, right? We get mad at uh, all these white rappers. They saying, oh, they're appropriating our culture. But you know what? Truth be told, a lot of blacks and Latinos is culture vultures too. Because we take their culture and try to call it ours. Ain't no way in hell our people should be celebrating Christmas, celebrating Easter, celebrating Halloween. That has nothing to do with our people. God gave us a culture, and yet we forsake it. We don't want to be a part of that. We want to be with America. This has to change, y'all. I'm telling you. Read. And to restore the preserved of Israel. We have to restore the preserved of our people. Go ahead. I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles. It says, and we're going to be a light to our brothers and sisters who don't know that they Israelites. Because that's the Gentiles is talking about. Right. We sitting there calling ourselves African American. I'm a Chicano. You're a Gentile in the mind and the flesh, not understanding that you're an Israelite. We take the other ways of the nations and call it our own. We celebrate their holidays and not our holy days. That's what makes us a Gentile in the flesh. But when you wake up and you repent and you understand who you are, then you start to come back into that covenant that was made with our people. That's right. That's the truth of the Bible. The truth is, this Bible is only written for one nation of people. Give me Psalms. What is that, 149? 
147, 19 and 20. Thank you, Bobby. Psalms 147, 19 and 20. I'm going to show you out the Bible that this Bible isn't for everybody. It's only for us. So if the Bible is only made for us, why do so many of our people reject this Bible? Let's change it, y'all. Let's change it. Go ahead. Psalms 147, verse 19. He showed this word unto Jacob. God said he showed this word, his words unto Jacob. Jacob had sons who became the nation of Israel. Who we are. This word is for us. Go ahead. And his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He showed his statutes and his judgments unto the children of Israel. Go ahead. Verse 20. He hath not dealt so with any nation. God said he ain't dealt like that with no other nation. Just you. Just us. This is what I want my people to understand. So-called Latinos, we're out here for you. You might see a, so, a lot of so-called black people up here, but we're Native Americans just like y'all. This is what we out here doing, trying to get it to our people, the truth. Go ahead. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. The other nations don't know the judgments of the Most High God. That's why they deal with us so unjustly. Go back to the Lamentations, chapter 4, verse 17. You can leave that scripture. For those of you just pulling up, the Bible says America cannot save us. Right. So why are we trying to save America? America can care less about our people, yet we love it here. We got to change this. Hey, T. Uh, I'm done in five minutes. Five minutes. Read the Lamentations again? Yep, Lamentations. Go ahead and read that. Verse 17. The book of Lamentations, chapter 4, verse 17. Listen up, y'all. As for us. Our eyes as have yet failed for our vain help. It says our eyes have failed for our vain help. Y'all ever seen the movie where the person is stuck on an island and they only chance of salvation is a helicopter and they get so happy saying, hey, we're over here, hey. And the helicopter just keep going by. That's our people. Eyes have failed for the vain help because it's not coming to us. Not in the form that you think. Yeah. Our people are looking for uh, the police to save them. That's right. When they're only here to enforce the law. They're law enforcement. They're not here to save you. Come on, Read. In our watching, we have watched for a nation that could not save us. And here's the twist. Because we sit on our behinds and we watch for another nation to save us. But we can be getting up and helping ourselves. Stop watching for America to save you because it's not happening. Go ahead. They hunt our steps. It says they hunt our steps. Video almost made me cry on the way home. And I promise you this. Watching a video of the, the helicopter footage when they shot Brother Stephon Clark down. They was hunting that brother from the air. Shot that brother down in his own backyard. Holding a cell phone because he fit the description. How the hell does somebody fit the description at 12 o'clock at night when it's dark? Bring it out, huh? In his own backyard. They hunt our steps. Go ahead. Now we cannot go in our streets. We can't even go in our own streets. Because this world was made for us. All this land is ours. And we can't even go in our own streets because we're being hunted by cops. Breathe. Our end is near. It says our end is near. Our days are fulfilled. Uh -huh. For our end is come. Our end is come. Our people are cursed here in America. Yeah, preach. We're not blessed, we're cursed. Yeah, bring it on, brother. Give me Hosea chapter 1 and verse 10. Go to truth. Go ahead, huh? The book of Hosea chapter 1 and verse 10. I want to leave y'all with this. Go ahead. Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea. My people, blacks and Latinos, we populate like no other nation. It says our seas is like the, uh, the stars of the heaven and the sand of the sea. Go ahead. Which cannot be measured nor numbered. They can't, they can't number our nation. As much as they try, they cannot measure how big we are. Go ahead. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Listen up to this, please. Go ahead. Ye are not my people. God said it's going to come to pass. In the same place where they told you that you are not God's people. Because they didn't tell you that you was an Israelite. They told you you was Chicano and black. Native American and Negro. Go ahead. 
there it shall be said unto them. It said in that same place it shall be said to them what? Ye are the sons of the living God. I'm telling you, you are the sons of the living God. You That's are right. the real Jews. You are the Israelites of the Bible. It's yeah. time for our people to wake up. Right. And I can't say shalom because we don't have no peace. Let's but go. go home and do some research, please. Yeah.